Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Um, oh, wrong screen. Why isn't that working? There we go. Wide screen. <laughs> anyway, thanks uh, for joining me today on my photo editing live stream where you can submit your images and I edit them for you live using Olympus Workspace first and then uh, any non Olympus cameras generally I do uh, with uh, Lightroom. And uh, welcome anybody that's new here or if this is the first time you submitted an image, just let me know. I'm just curious. Um, it's always it's always to uh, always good to have new people here come in and, and submit your photos. And uh, this is kind of a new time, so uh, it's a little bit later than usual. So I know there's a lot of people here that probably normally used to come on Thursdays aren't here. So I apologize for that if you're watching after the fact. But you know, the Tuesday and Sunday live stream with the editing should be more in line with your time frame. All right, so uh, let's just get to the photos. Um, actually, you know what? There's a lot, of, well, most, most of the people here from the last stream, I'll probably talk about this Sunday, but I forgot to mention it, was, uh, you know, the news, I was watching Joe Edelman's uh, live stream yesterday and Jimmy Chang's, but Joe Edelman talked about uh, some news about Nikon laid off 20,000 people and uh, they're moving their factories to Thailand. Uh, you know, that they're in trouble and all of that, I guess. I don't know. And, and, he's, and he made a comment that nobody's making videos about this bad news, so to speak, right? And I, you know, my, and he didn't respond to it, I guess. But my response was, you know, right now, Nikon is uh, giving out their Nikon Z6 II out to a lot of creators at about the same time this announcement was. So it was, you know, I, I was like, Joe, just wait a week. Next week, everybody will be on this. So you heard it here first that if there's going to be any, like, dumping on Nikon, it's going to happen next week, not this week. Uh, because right now, everybody's reviewing the Z6 II, so they're not going to review the Z6 II, tell you what a great camera is, and oh, by the way, Nikon's going out of business, right? So... I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little, but you kind of get the idea, right, that I think Nikon did that on purpose, right? They, they released this camera in a way that it overlaps with this other news so that, you know, all the creators that got the Z6 II to review are on this non-disclosure agreement and all of that, so they can't even talk about it even if they know about it. All right, so uh, let's get to the photos. I, I'll mention it again on Sunday. But I'll have, to, I'll have to find out about if it's true or not. I haven't seen the news report myself. I just heard it on Joe Edelman's stream. Where's the right? Here we go. <clears throat> oh, you know, somebody said not to use their photo. I think it was Steve. Is Steve's photo in here? Simon is here. Hey, Simon, how are you? You just stopped by. Oh, you can't stay. Uh, sorry, I'll do yours first then. How's that? I think it's this one. So, are you still here? Well, either way, I'll do yours first. Because it's this awesome plane here. This is cool. Um, man, nice detail. Let's look at the exit data. So we're using an EM1X with a 40 to 150 Pro with a 2X teleconverter. So you're effectively 300 millimeters. Uh, and at 5.6, one four thousandth of a second. Wow. Awesome settings. ISO 800. You probably could have kept it down to one one thousandth of a second and kept your ISO lower. Uh, I mean, I mean, you got to be ready for anything, right? But a shot like this, you could have probably done it one one thousandth of a second, ISO 200. Um, but like I said, I, I've never done an air show, so you may need to be ready for anything. And one four thousandth of a second will be necessary, but... Okay, uh, it's not a person this time. Oh, okay, that's right. You've been sending in portraits and stuff, right? Um, okay, where's my timer? Let's, let's just get started. Okay, 
Good settings though. Let's see, what can I do here? I think I just need more contrast because it's the image is a little flat because I guess it was a cloudy day and it needs to be warmed up a little bit. I would even go 7,000K here. Uh, even higher. Oh my goodness. That still doesn't look right. Uh, let's, oh, I, I can use the custom white balance on this. Let's pick a gray point here. See, 7,800K. I knew the white balance was way off. And then uh, let's, uh, let's add a little dehaze for the clouds. And oh, we can go all the way up on that. If it's too much contrast, I can adjust it in the tone curve. Let's add in a little clarity. And then seriously, workspace, you're going to drag butt today. All right, let's work on this noise a little bit. Uh, let me add some sharpness in. And then we'll put a, put a high noise filter. It's because I cranked up the clarity and stuff. Maybe I need to back that off a little. Let me just back it off. And I don't think this is going to help, but let me try. Yeah, that's, that's worse. How about four? Now, it looked like filter one did the best. It's very hard to tell on YouTube, I'm sure. This is not helping at all. So let's, let's leave that off. Let me add in a little bit more sharpness. Let's do uh, 1.5, put a 15 here. Okay, good enough. Now let's work with the tone curve a little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll look, Walter. I'll, I'll drag it in at the end. <clears throat> um, we can compress the uh, histogram apparently. Quite a bit. Right here. And let's do some individual color luminance, particularly that blue. And then pull the saturation. Uh, maybe not. I think saturation is good, but I'll pull it back just a little bit. And then let's do an auto gradation. Hopefully, I didn't jack up the tones too much. Tiny bit of vignette. Well, okay, forget the vignette. All right, time. So let's do a before and after. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, basically I, I separated the plane from the background. A lot of that had to do with the white balance, though. The white balance was just way off. I knew it was over 7,000, but it, with the auto white balance, you know, the eyedropper, I, it came out to 7,800. And then for detail... Yikes. I would have to back off the color a little bit. I really messed up the color. Let me... Let me back this off. Back off the saturation more. Now let me look.
Did that help? That helps some. Where am I getting all this blotchiness from? I hate to do that to this picture. Is it coming in the dehaze? A little bit there. All right. Anyway, that's the idea. So, uh, that looks pretty good. If, if I had more time, I would, I would probably crank up the saturation on the orange. Well, I do have more time. It's my stream. <laughs> Let me crank up orange. Like so. But uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let, let that render. And now, now I think you have a, you have a starting point anyway. You'd have to really work on the noise a little bit uh, by adjusting the sharpening and stuff and the dehaze. But I think that that's a good start on that picture. All right, you're welcome, Simon. All right, let's go to the next one. And we have some architecture here from DeMorkin. Like this is this is a shot compositionally I would send in as as a on paid work. I mean, this is a really good shot. Um, what do we do on the EXIF here? The M10 Mark II with a 14 to 42 kit lens from Panasonic. F5.2, 1 1,000th, 1, ISO 200. Man, this is a pretty bright day. Uh, okay. Let's, let's bring in the gradation a little bit there. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat this like a, a regular job photo because that's what this is, basically. Um, let's pick this as a white point. Probably cool it off quite a bit if I do that. Is that it? 5800K? Why does this feel like it should be warmer? Let me try over here. Wow, that's surprising. I gotta zoom in. Something's. I'm gonna pick this as a white point. Exactly the same. Interesting. Okay. Uh. Let's go into this. Let's add sharpness. I'm going to put a low noise filter on it. And I mean, I shouldn't have to, though, because we're at ISO 200, 1 1,000th. So I'm going to turn the noise filter off because we, we got plenty of light. Honestly, I don't need to do much more. This is pretty much there. Uh, I'm not going to do vivid. And let me just add some contrast. Just a tiny bit here and then push it back up very quickly. Uh, let me put a pin here. You lock the sky in. Just a little bit more here. Yeah, right there is good. So we're doing good. I don't understand. This looks a little bit soft to me. It must I've never used this lens, but this lens is a little bit soft for an image like this, because this is a pretty bright image, relatively speaking. Okay, I don't have any color controls, but... 
Um, you guys think the foreground should come out a little bit? Maybe. I mean, like I said, if this was like a paid job, uh, I would be okay with this because it shows that it has a big yard or big area, right? Of open space. So that's actually useful information in real estate photography, but uh, compositionally, there's plenty of room here and here. I mean, just the right amount of room on left and right. So the only other crop might be a 16 by nine because I don't want to lose that. Oh, I'm out of time, but okay. So let's, uh, let's look at the before and after. So yeah, I think um, this is a shot I would send in. I would send in the square shot though, as a, uh, for like a paid job, because when I submit things to the real estate agents, a lot of times the top and bottom get cut off anyway in their, uh, when they put it on their own website. So it's good to have a more square image than it is a rectangular six by nine for real estate photography, at least here in the US. The MLS system tends to cut the top and bottom off or their individual websites. They have these third party softwares that, um, Keep hitting the wrong button. They have this third party software that cuts the top and bottom off. Um, but okay, that I think that works. Nice clean edit. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we have some flowers. This feels sideways though because of the brick. I never see brick going go in this direction. I'm thinking. We need to rotate this. I'm gonna do it here. And no matter which way I do it, it looks kind of weird. I'll go back. I don't, I don't understand the perspective you got on this. So I gotta, oh my God, I'm very, my eyes are very confused right now. What I'm looking at in terms of perspective. All right, let me just go with what it was originally. I'm going to square crop it. And just come in, come in on this one flower right here. Gosh, this brick is throwing me off the way it is in the background. Well, when I rotate the image any other way, it just looks weird. Uh, is there a way to rotate this without going back out? That's something I've never... Oh, there it is, there it is. Rot Rotate. Control R. I don't know. I like it pointing up best. All right. So EXIF, I'm sorry. Uh, no EXIF data. Why? Oh, EM5, yeah. here we go, EM5 Mark III, Olympus 40 to 150 Pro at 142 millimeters, F5.6, 150 at the ISO 800. So this is a day that's a little bit dark. 
but I would have dropped my shutter speed down to probably one sixtieth of a second than did ISO 200. Like, I think you could have come down two stops easily. Um, <clears throat> or drop your, uh, your uh, aperture down. But, um, okay, so these are, these are pretty straightforward, these flower images. You just do a pop art on them. And then you pull the color back a little bit here if it's too much. And throw in a vignette, maybe a little tighter crop. I'll just rotate it this way. Pull the saturation back. Quick sharpness. Low noise filter. All right, let's do a standard. Okay. Oh, time's up. So let's see how we did. It's it needs to render, but it's coming. <clears throat> Okay, that, oh, sorry, it needs to be warmer too. Uh, let's just go about right there. All right, now I'm done. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, that looks good. Just basically bring the color out and warm it up a bit. Uh, there you have it. I didn't even have to touch the tone curve at all. Um, that was from Ivan. Oh, a leaf shot. This is cool on a bench. Let me try... Let me do a square crop. Tighten that up. Yeah, right. Like this. You see how that looks? A little too tight. I don't, I think I had, I tilted it too much. I don't get enough headroom here. Now nah, that's just too, that's just too weird. Let me, all right. Let me reset this back. This is a tough one to compose. This this little button here is distracting me a little bit. Maybe like that. Okay, that kind of works for me.
and throw in a heavy vignette. Throw in some sharpness. Oh, uh, we have a uh, an exit data to EM1 Mark II, Olympus 25 F18 at F4, 1125th, ISO 200 plus. Yeah, all good settings. Um, okay, so let's warm it up a bit. Like that. And then I think we can pull, let me pull the saturation off. I'm going to mess with the tone curve, and that's going to saturate it more. But, yeah, something like that. And where are the yellows at? All the way up here. So I can crush everything but the yellow. What is this? This is, this is down there. This is down, way down. Okay. So... Maybe if I pull this up more, pull this down more. Okay. Uh, oh, out of time. All right, so I think <clears throat> Dang, I really hurt my... Okay. I lost the water droplet on the leaf with this edit, which is a shame, because that's kind of nice. But I like, I like the crop a lot better. This crop works for me way better than the way it was before. I'm just sad that I lost the little reflection right here. I would brush that back in on Photoshop, but I can't do it here. Uh, could have been roomy. <laughs> oh, thanks, John. Yeah, it's good light for the shot, right? I wish I wish these shadows were a little harsher, all that good stuff. But um, I think I think it's definitely an improvement over the old one based on this, particularly the crop. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Um, we got a little swan dude. Oh, let's do the exit real quick. EM10 Mark II with a 17 millimeter F18 at F8 1 2 50th ISO 200. All good settings. Excellent settings. Um, Let me come in a little bit tighter. And rotate this. Not like that. And... I don't know if I need all of this. I think let me try that it's a little bit heavy on the left side uh, if we do a square crop still heavy Okay, this I like. And do I have any color control? No, dang it. So let's put in vivid. And white balance is about right. And the trees are up here, so I'm going to put a pin here. 
add some contrast in. Right about there. I wonder if I can save these highlights a little bit. Let me try that. Let me bring this down. No, I can't do it in this. I can't do it in workspace. So I'm going to just bring it down a little bit. And then, uh, and then adjust the tone curve back. Let me, well, let me try gradation first. Nope, nope, nope. I like, I like the normal tone curve better. I'm just going to push it up here a little bit. I don't think I even want this blue sky. <clears throat> All right, uh, Lauren says super wide. I don't know. I'll take a quick look. I'm pretty much done. But like a 16 by 7. That could work too. But let's look at just going with my original crop and then we'll compare here. Uh, well, So yeah, the <laughs> the wideness of the scene is kind of wasted on me, right? The super wide wasn't bad looking though, I think. I thought the super wide wasn't bad. Let me let me do that one more time. And just bring this down. This this is actually not bad either. Super wide let that render out. I mean, that kind of works too. Even with the editing that I did, I wouldn't change anything. Um, yeah, actually, Lauren, I think I think I prefer the super wide now. Now that we've done it, a sixteen by seven, definitely. Um, cut off a little bit on the left, maybe. Yeah, just a little bit on this side, like right about to there. Something like that. It's getting there, but I think that looks good. Yeah, the wide looks better, definitely. Uh, all right. Thank you, Roberto. Good shot. No wonder your settings are good, because you know what you're doing. <laughs> Roberto has his own Olympus channel, actually. Uh, all right. Let's see. This one is from John Follows. Wow. We need a little faster shutter speed and the highlights are clipped, but let's see what we did. This is a EM1 Mark II, 75 to 300, F9, 1 hundredth of a second. Wow. ISO 6400. Wow. Yeah, this is going to be rough. This lens at high ISO is really rough. Um, and I think, yeah, nothing you can do about these settings. Even at one sixteen hundredth of a second, you know, there's still a motion blur. Which is, uh, you know, could be part of the shot too, right? But I don't think it was in this case. Let's see if we can save. I can't even save the highlights there. They're gone. At least, at least in work, Workspace is not really that good at recovering highlights. Um... And then I'll just push it back up this way. Put a pin here.
Oh, this is a JPEG. No wonder. No wonder I can't pull the highlights down. <laughs> All right, that's part of it. And let's put let's put a heavy vignette though. Yeah, if I had the raw image, I might have been able to save some more of the highlights, but they're definitely gone in the JPEG. Nothing I can do here. But let me see. I need to illuminate the reds a little bit. Reds and orange. More red. It's hardly making any difference. Pull the yellows back. Dang, there's just not much I can do here. With a really high contrast scene like this, try sepia, sure. Uh, that's actually not bad. Let me try. Let me reset this. Pull it this way. Yeah, I like that. Right about there. Let's bring in just a little bit, not quite that much, just a little bit here. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I can do because it's already cropped in real tight and it's a JPEG, so I can't really pull the highlights in or adjust the colors too much. It's, everything is baked in already. Uh, dehaze. Dehaze is... Well... Yeah, that was a good call. It did bring in some more detail on the feathers. I mean, mon monochromes, yo, I always dehaze anyway. Okay, let's call it here. I think sepia is actually a good call on this image. So uh, there's the before and after. <laughs> um, it, looks, it looks good. It looks pretty good considering what we had to start with, I think. Definitely um, a raw image would have been helpful here. But all this in the background is a little bit distracting, so crushing all the blacks down, uh, I think helped this image a lot. Okay, let's see what else we got here. This is from Image Rider and EM10 Mark II, 14 to 42 kit lens, F16. 1 2 50th, and you did fire a flash, which it's, it's obvious. Uh, so we're just going to carry this a little further. I think you're using... Let's put this in low key. And then crush the blacks. Then bring up the highlights. Right there. Yeah, EM10 Mark II is a great camera, right? Uh, let's pull the saturation back a little bit. And then just crank up the sharpening, turn off the noise. I think, I think we're good. We use flash, so we're fine on ISO and everything. Uh, and then... Let's pull the yellows and oranges back. Oh, I don't have color control, so screw that. A little bit of dehaze to bring in some texture. I 
let's see. Yeah, that's looking good. A little bit more brightness. It's a little dark. Right there. Walter's asking, how would it look if you use a linear curve and go negative on the shadows and positive on the highlights to increase the contrast? I have no idea what you're talking about. A linear curve and go negative on the shadows and positive on the highlights and increase the contrast. Yeah, linear, I get the idea of a straight, but then negative on shadows. What the heck are you talking about, negative on shadows? Unless you're talking about this. I mean, let me reset that. Are you talking about doing that? I mean, that doesn't look right. Uh... I could back off the shadow part. I mean, it's kind of getting back to what I had before, but it's not crushing the blacks as well as it did when I was doing it manually. So uh, let me just go back to my manual adjustment. Crushing that, then bring it back up here. Okay. Uh, Let me pull some of the dehaze off. Dang, I had a good tone curve before, now it's all jacked up. Oh, time's up. All right, so that's, let me warm it up a little bit and we'll call it. Uh, it just needs, just needs a little bit more warmth. Because when you warm up an image, it, it brightens it up a little bit too. All right, there we go. So that's the before and after. Um, man, I'd like to crush the blacks a little bit more. I could do that. Actually, I can do that pretty easily with a vignette. Like that. And... Just crush them a little bit more. All right, I think that's it. Now I'm done. So right there. <laughs> Almost there. Definitely, I think that looks better though. Okay. Um, let's do, yeah, all by itself, it looks really good, I think. Okay, uh, let's see, we got this one. This is from John Yutze. Oh, John's here, hi, John. Um, just need to straighten it a little bit. See if we straighten this, if we lose too much. Okay, we didn't lose anything yet. Come off this. And... Again, just some contrast here. Oops, I didn't put my timer on. Let me do a little manual gradation. This is a JPEG, so again, I'm gonna have a little trouble with this. Not too much though, nothing's really blown out. 
but um, some vignette there. Do a little more straightening. There and throw in a sharpness. Well, not that much, about this much. What are these things anyway, John? They look like little bird houses or something, but there's no stems. So, what the heck are these for? I just don't. Um, I think that's it. Maybe just, just a touch of saturation here. And a little dehaze for the background. A little bit of clarity for the poles. There's just a tiny bit of rain. I think that's it. They're gourds made into birdhouses. Okay. I'm just used to seeing little stems on birdhouses, but I guess you don't really need one. Uh, let me see where, where we're at real quick, before and after. Okay. I almost feel like I don't need to be even that, that tall. I think I'm done. Nothing else I can do here. It's already cropped in really tight. Good colors. Good contrast. Everything is everything's solid here. Did I say made in the USA up here? <laughs> yeah, it does. Interesting. You wouldn't know this was like something. In, I've never seen this. Why would there be motion at the front door in my house? Uh, okay, I'm going to call it here. So there's a before and after. So essentially, you know, like this, these two things down here, these two gourds, birdhouses, just the one being cut off is not good. So I just cropped it in right here. And I didn't like this um, this thing here. What is that? A, some kind of parking meter? Uh, so I just took out the things I didn't like. I didn't like this, and I didn't like the parking meter. So I cropped it in, then contrast and color. I think that looks looks a little sharper. Okay. Um, Let's see, this is from Lauren. Oh, I've seen this picture before. Lauren emailed this to me about a month ago. GX85, the 14 millimeter F6.3, 1 2,000th ISO 200. Ah, yeah, the Ford. Um, I'm gonna go with, because I, I, I know you did a black and white, I think they look good both ways, but I'm going to go black and white on this. Because honestly, the picture is perfect already. So just to do something, kind of take a different take on the same thing. Uh, not this, this. How about sepia? <laughs> no, maybe, maybe sepia will work. Let me, let me work with sepia a bit. This could work. And let's put a red filter to darken the green. And uh, I don't know if I need to, if I want to bring this in or not. <laughs> Can I make it a woody? Nope. <laughs> 
Let me pull this out. Let's see if we can bring a little bit of the hood in. Yeah, that's helping a little bit. What I might have to do is bring the exposure down. Ah, JPEG though. Let me bring it down a little, pull this in, and then pull it back up very quickly. Right there. And then a heavy vignette. And see. Oh, you got a big mop, Brandon, for $353. Wow. On a four thirds mount. Motion detected at the front door. Oh. All right, I got to check my front door. Okay. Um I think I don't know. I don't see anything on my front door. Okay. Uh I don't know. Crop wise, I like seeing this gas in here. I like all of this. Yeah, if somebody was at the front door, Ellie would be losing her mind right now. I think I'm done, Lauren. You pretty much did all the work already. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. In sepia, believe it or not. Man, that car is clean. Golly. A little before and after. I mean, the original image is so good. It's not much... Not much to do other than just get creative with it. But I, I don't know. I just thought I'd try sepia, but I think the green looks good too, the full color. All right. Could I have isolated the red? Not too much. Uh, was there any red in the scene? There's no red. In the scene, really. I don't know what you mean, Trevor, by isolating the red. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, we got a bird shot here. This is the M1 Mark II with the 300 F4 with the 1.4 teleconverter. So effective 420 millimeters at 5.6, 1 640th ISO 1600. Yeah, all good settings. Um, these blue herons are pretty big birds. So you don't need to, um, but there is some motion blur. See, see this stick right here? There is some motion blur still. So I'm not sure. You really need to be faster. I mean, the bird itself doesn't require faster shutter speed, but this focal length. Regardless of your IBIS, you need to have a faster shutter speed. I think uh, at least one one thousandth of a second. I would have felt more comfortable with one two thousandth of a second with this kind of distance because you have a 420 millimeter, which is 840 millimeter full frame, which would dictate a 16 hundredth of a second shutter speed in full frame. But because micro four thirds, you know, the pixel pitch is so small, uh, smaller than full frame typically, like 24 megapixel full frame, you have to even use a faster shutter speed than that double your focal length rule. 
Uh, so I would say one two thousand would would have been ideal for this shot. But okay, it's not back focus. It's it's just simply motion blur. It looks like you you hit focus spot on, but when you look at the branches, like right here, you see a little bit of doubling. It's very subtle. But this this line here, that's motion blur. Okay, so um, either that or the other thing it could be is shutter shock. So whenever I shoot really long focal lengths, I shoot in silent shutter mode uh, because then you get, I don't know, the EM1 Mark II shouldn't have shutter shock, but uh, definitely, let me see if it tells me your shutter mode down here. Oh, I'm not seeing it. Single frame. So yeah, it might be, excuse me, it might even be shutter shock that's causing some of this. But okay, um, let's, let's crop in. I wasted two minutes just talking about motion blur and shutter shock. Uh, let's do a square. Yeah, that's better. No. Not enough headroom. Let me try that. Not enough tail room. Just right. Okay, I like that. Definitely some clarity. Definitely a ton of sharpness. Yeah, low is good here. Um, And just a, let's try the haze. See if that'll bring in some of the detail on the feather. Just a little bit. Uh, then good heavy vignette on this one. And saturation. Definitely add a little bit of warmth on the white balance. Let's go 6,500. Uh, yeah, right around there. Oh, too much. 65, 63. Okay. Good. And then only other thing. Only thing, other thing I can try is, is uh, maybe just just faking the sharpness a little bit, like so. Go a little higher. Yeah, right, right there. Okay. Oops, this one. So um, let's do a before and after. But yeah, I just cropped in, moved it over to the right. Instead of, you know, you have it front and center right now. Uh, so I think a little bit off to the right. So he's kind of walking or swimming into the frame versus being right in the middle. And then just a tiny bit of sharpening, like a little bit of fake sharpening, just helps a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's. I think your shutter speed is just too too low on this, or you, or you need to use silent shutter, because this lens is tack sharp. This 
this 300 millimeter f4 should not be giving you an image like this it should be tack sharp so those those are the couple of issues i see technically with it okay um oh thanks dave trevor says try portrait oh i'll give it a quick go um I guess portrait's okay. Now you get the double reflection, right? The full reflection in the water. I think this, this composition is just as valid, maybe better. Because um, now you got that mirror reflection, right? So yeah, that's, that's a decent way to go. All right, uh, let's see. This is from Ed Krisiak. Oh, this is the same train. It's got the same number here, 425. Uh, it looks like it's in a little different position, though. Um, so definitely, we got to get rid of all this haze. I might be able to just do the haze and be done. Because <laughs> it, it must be raining or something. Let's the haze. That's not quite doing it, but we're almost there. Yeah, it's pouring rain here. Um, so I'm wondering if it's worth it to save the rain or not, but. I need to go a lot colder too. This tungsten lighting on the right and a little bit right here is let me cool it off i want it to look like night night time and uh i'm i'm a little bit torn here Save the rain to show us how in workspace. I'm not sure what you mean. But let me desaturate a little bit. I'm going to go with a low saturation on this one. And clarity might bring the rain out more. Clarity is really good at speculars. You see this? I don't know if you can see this in, in YouTube or not, but Clarity is really good for rain. It brings out the little speculars a little better. So I'll crank that up. We'll save the rain. Uh, okay, we're getting there, I think. Let me add some vignette. Definitely need some vignette. just to give it a little more punch to the center. Oh, I have a just color. Ooh, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can illuminate this a little bit. That's mostly orange. And then these blues, let me saturate the blue a little bit. And <laughs> this might be a candidate for flames. Uh, yellow and orange. And this blue. And the oranges can be a little bit more red. So let's see if we can do that. Oh, yeah, that's the magic.
I think that's it. So let me add some sharpening and turn off this noise filter. I, I didn't even look at the exif here. Let me let me pull the exif up. EM1X 40 to 150 F28 at ISO 400. So yeah, good settings. One second exposure. That's why the rain's a little bit off. Okay, I get it now. I thought I thought it might have been noise related, but it's because it's a long shutter speed. That's why the rain is a little bit streaky. I get that. Okay. Um, let's do a before and after. So I I would I need to desaturate the blues a little bit. Dang it. Let me just do that, then I'll be done. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have done this. I liked how it looked on the train, but it's messing up the rain. There, that should fix the rain. Okay. Yeah, that looks better. It needs to render just a tiny bit more. But um, I like how that looks. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's from a movie, right? <laughs> but yeah, I think that came out good. I would just. It's really a good picture. You can do so much with this. I, I would pull the blacks a little bit more. Kind of right there. But anyhow, okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, last one here. And then I got to go to, oh, I did this one. All right, let me check Lightroom. Um, Let's see, it looks like I need to do this one. And this one. And these are mine. Everything else I think I've done. Let me see, I did that one, that one. I didn't do that one. Yeah, so. So two cameras to go, or two shots. Um, thank you, everyone. Yeah, that, that train edit came out OK, right? Uh, let me pull this back, pull this out. All right, let me do quick auto and then a quick straightening down here and compositionally we're close I don't know if I need this right side so much or so much of that left side Um, maybe, maybe a little bit here. Uh, the bench is kind of interesting though. Let's do a four by five. No. Yeah, that's, that's better, right? there and less blacks all these highlights in <clears throat> and 
let's warm it up a little bit more. Give it some glow. Let's pull out some of the color noise. Not that much. Throw some sharpening in to right there. And a noise. Move that some of that out. Okay. Good. Now let's desaturate a tiny bit. Where are the individual colors? Let's pull some of this yellow off. Add some blues in. The blues and the aquas. I don't know if it's the oranges. Let me see. Maybe it's the oranges that are thrown. No, definitely the yellows. Crank up the red, blue, and let's see. Maybe I want to light paint a little bit, but I'm running out of time here. All this. There. Oh, what I really wanted to do is just bring this light in like this. Sorry, I'm going over time, but I, I really want to do some of this. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Otherwise I'll get stuck doing this all night. Uh, where's my before and after? Okay, so there's the before and after. Um, I, if I had, if I could spend like 10 more minutes on this, I would definitely really light this thing up with some light painting. Um, but I think that came out fairly decent, right? I mean, this the I would pull the vignette off and then light paint it manually a little more. But I was trying to save time by using a vignette, uh, but that didn't work too well. But anyway, okay. Uh, let's see. There's one more here, right? 
Oh, an easy one. It's only, uh, let's see, 300 millimeter F6.7. What, what lens is this? It's from Dawid. 75 to 300. I can't believe you got this sharp an image off that lens. You're at ISO 200. That's partially it, though. But man, that's pretty good for this lens. I'm impressed. Um, all right, so let me uh, let me just recompose this shot like this, nice and tight. And thank you, Trevor. <laughs> thank you guys for that last edit. I appreciate that. Um, okay, just a slight tilt. This way. And let's let's bring up the shadows. Bring the blacks in a little bit. And push the whites. Okay, good. Pull the highlights in a little bit. A little bit of clarity, tiny bit of dehaze. Pull this back, push this. Uh, it's best if you send me the raw image, Tina, if you can, then that would effectively be straight out of camera. Then I got the most flexibility in post, but if you send a JPEG, it's okay, but I, I'd rather have a raw. Um, all right, let's do a little sharpening. Where's... I can do it. Yeah, right there. Let's just pull off some of this detail. A little bit of color noise. That's a little bit too much. Okay. Yeah, right about there is good. And let me do just a tiny bit warmer. Right about there. Let's pull the orange off a little bit. Oops. Where did it go here? Not that much, maybe that and a little bit there. Okay. I think I'll call it right there. That's an impressive shot with that lens. I'm impressed. <laughs> Slightly closer, yeah. Maybe just square it off. That'll bring it in close enough. Right? And uh, a little bit more this way. Okay, we'll call it here. Uh, so I'm 
I got a lot more out of that than I thought you could. Yeah, I try. <laughs> I try, Dave. <laughs> no square crop? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in kind of indifferent to the crop. I'll go back to a 4 by. Let's do 4 by 5 in case they want to print it. Uh, let's, let's go sideways. Right, right there. Full on rule of thirds. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at the viewer edits. That was, that's, that's an amazing shot though with that lens. I'm impressed. <laughs> um... Let's see what you guys did with my picture. Um, <laughs> I got to show you the original first, right? So let me, oh, Walter, Walter sent one in too. So let me download that. Uh, download. Where's, <sighs> download. To viewer edits. Save, and then so let me drag this over. This is the original. Uh, you can see it's kind of a nice picture, but the light is very, very flat. I I have a couple shots where I use flash, but I missed. So I didn't give you guys that one. So this is this is a flat shot, but it has a lot of potential, right? So uh, let me show you what I did with mine. I just have it in my Instagram down here. Uh, here it is. That's what I did with it. Is I just I did this in Olympus Workspace, and I just did a partial color. And then maybe a couple other things, you know, sharpening or something. But this is my edit. I did a partial color. I got 177 likes. So that's, that's good for me. If I break 100 likes on a picture, I'm doing good. Um, so let's, uh, let's go to... <laughs> Petal should have come flames. Let me go to viewer edits. I'm gonna get rid of this pane, get rid of this star, and start here. So this is from John Falcons, I think. So this has got this is a what do you call this? Like a watercolor effect. This is cool. And this is similar to my crop. Just a little tighter, right? You just got the one corner. Um, but that's, I like this. This is a good edit. And then somebody went with the other side with the green leaves. That's cool. This is from uh, Ed. Oh, okay, Ed. Good job. I like this one too. I would prefer more of an angle, like a 45 degree angle from the top corner coming down, but uh, straight across horizontal is good. And let's see, gosh, another corner crop. This one's really tight though. Um, oh, hold on, was I zoomed in? Oh, dang it, sorry, Ed. This is your picture, right? I was zoomed in, hold on. I was not zoomed in here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here, sorry, my bad. Okay, so this is your edit. Okay, so I take back the thing about you cropping in on the horizontal. This works. <laughs> um, okay, oh, thanks, Adam. They're okay. Half the pictures on my Instagram are just test shots. So I can share people some things I'm doing, but the other half I try. <laughs> um, okay, this is good, too. This is a good crop. Uh, a little bit yellow on the green, though. This, this, this is a little bit too yellow, but this is a good crop. And this is from Joni. Okay, Joni, nice. 
try the right quarter. You mean on ah too late. This is a watercolor edit, Antonio. This is cool. Very, very different, right? Um I gotta use the watercolor filter more. I gotta find subjects that it works well with. It works halfway decent with this. Not perfect, but halfway decent here. Oh my goodness, what is this? Ivan, oh my god, you went like full-on negative here. But not negative. This looks like an alien flower now, like an x-ray of a flower. <laughs> but it's not an x-ray, it's weird. <laughs> this is cool. Okay. I like this one though. I'm I'm going with this for now is my favorite. And this is from Wu Dang. Okay, Wu Dang. I think you did it. You have a video on this, right, Wu Dang? I don't think he's here, but Wu Dang Wu Dang did a video where he edited this photo using uh dark room or dark table. I'm trying to learn to use Darktable because it's another free editor and it looks pretty good, but I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah, I, I need to refresh. I need to resynchronize the folder, Walter, and then your edit will show up. I, I, I'll do that right at the end. Since you were late. <laughs> oh, I like the way you did the framing here, kind of blurred out. This was, um, yeah, Wu Dang. This is the Morgan. Yeah, this is good. Good, rich green and yellow. And, and I like the crop. The vertical crop kind of works for this. Not crazy about the border, but I do like the crop a lot. Yeah, Wu Dang, like I said, he go to his channel, Wu Dang Academy, Dave, and then uh, his last video that he just posted is with this exact photo. Uh, used color grading, okay. Yeah, I can see, I can see where that would, like in Lightroom, they got those new little uh, things for color grading, right? Let's see, Roberto Di Donato. This is good. This is like, did you like, it's like sideways now though. This needs to be rotated. Well, anyway, you get the idea. It needs to be, it's sideways. Unless that's what you intended. But I like the editing. Good, good clean edit. Oh, wow, look at this. I, this got to be Neo with the framing or Surge. One of the two. Let's see. Yeah, Neo. <laughs> Neo, this is interesting how you blurred everything but the center. I like that. And you always do a good job with the colors. No question, the colors are pretty awesome. This is, this is a good edit. Very, uh, very singular in purpose, you know? I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, good one, right? I don't know if Neo's here. I thought he was here earlier. And then this one is, uh, this has got to be, oh, Image Rider. This is pretty good. Oh, just so you guys know, EM5 Mark III with the 14 to 150 kit lens. Those are the settings, just marginal settings. Um, I just tried to keep my ISOs low, but good settings, I think. But this is very, um, this is really an interesting edit. I like how everything is blurred around it. It's not like a bokeh effect. It's, it's more of a surreal effect, right? So I kind of like that surreal look to it. This is really interesting. Um, oh, look at this. 
I like the framing on this. And it's uh, this got to be Lauren if it's sepia. <laughs> Let's see. John, you'd say, oh my goodness. Nice one, John. Really good crop, too. See, these are crops I would never even think of. And I'm like the crop meister, you know? But I would never even think of crops like this. But they somehow they work. Eth ethereal effect. Yes, Dave, that's the correct. That is the correct uh, word. I got I to gotta look up how to pronounce that, though. Ethereal. Because I've never used that word in a sentence in my life. I've heard it many times, but I've never used it. Uh, let's see. This one is John Follows. Okay. Good. This is kind of a mirror image, though. I guess she didn't like it going the other direction. That's interesting, though. You're the second person to kind of change the orientation. I wonder why people are doing that. I mean, this works, but I, I'm just curious why the orientation didn't work the way it was, like the flower on the left side coming off to the right versus you have the flower on the right side coming down to the left. I'm just curious. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, I like this. It's got like this yellow glow everywhere and then a hot spot in the middle. This is kind of cool. Marcel Van Cotton, yeah, Cotton. Very good. A little bit too hot in the middle, maybe. Just a hair too hot here. Tone this down a tiny bit. But I do like I do like the impression of how the glow is this this sunflower is making everything else glow yellow. Oh wow. This is this is similar to uh what Neo did. He blurred everything but the center. But you frame this wider. Surge, okay. Oh, excuse me. I would go into bed at like 8 39 o'clock so I can get up at you know 4 35 in the morning. <laughs> so we're like into my bedtime here, but that's okay. Um Okay, I can go for this. Let me look at this full screen. Sometimes it's it's a little different effect when you look at it like this. I'm just trying to get a feel for this this blurring action because Neo did it. Now you're doing it. But good job on the black and white processing. It's very crisp. Good. Really good. This is probably exactly how I would edit the black and white, but without the blur. But this is a this is interesting. Okay. Uh wow, another one where somebody put the flower on the right. It's not you're not like re uh, recom uh, what's the word I used? Well, anyway, everybody's going with the flower on the right side. But this is a good crop, too. I mean, these are all really good crops. The sunflower, I mean, being a circle, you can crop it any way you want, I guess. Because <laughs> it's circular, right? But um, I like this crop, too. Oh, the DNGs? Oh, you know what, Randy, you're right. There was a DNG. Let me go back and get that one. I'll finish this viewer edit real quick and I'll get, because I remember you sent, you sent the DNG. Let me resynchronize and make sure, because I did see your edit, your photo. Oh, I like this. This, this is very good job of uh, making it look like there's light only hitting one place. Because remember, the original photo was very flat lighting. But this, this looks like, natural light coming in one little spot this is a, this is pretty awesome editing here um who did this trevor wow trevor good job really good job on the editing i, I don't know if this is my favorite image but this is definitely the best editing 
This 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 takes some skill and a good eye doing something like this. Like I wouldn't be able to do this. Um Okay, this one this one is looks this is okay. This is basically just warmed it up and then cropped in, it looks like. Let's see, who did this one? Dawid. This is not a bad crop. You front and centered the 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 uh, flower. So this is this is an interesting crop, but the editing needs to go a lot further, I think, because it looks like all you did was warm it up a little bit, um, and a tiny bit of sharpening. But okay, yeah, purist edit, right, Dawid? Yeah, it's more of a purist edit. This is more realistic, definitely. So if, if you, you know, I'm more kind of artsy fartsy, right? So I like to see punchy contrast or punchy colors or something weird, you know? This is very purist. A lot like what the original was, but then just tweaked to make it just a little better, right? But yeah, it's fun seeing what other people did, right? This is this got to be Deb. She's always does these faces, you know. Because if you look right in the middle, there's a face here. <laughs> always, always, they're always fun to look at, though, right? I I guarantee this is Deb. Yeah, Deb O'Connor. If it wasn't Deb, somebody's copying her style. But this is definitely her style to to. To do like the split image or kaleidoscope and then find faces in the in the in the picture itself. It's always it's always fun seeing what she does. Okay, that was the last one, except Walters. Let me resync the folder. Uh yeah, there's one there. And this one is from Walter Rowe. Oh, nice, Walter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, good job on the black and white processing. It's very soft. And I, I don't mean in sharpness, but the contrast. But it's just right, especially right in here. Really good. Nothing is completely black except maybe this. See, this is this is an edit I would never do because I, you know me, I like I like a strong black. But um, let me get the EXIF out of the way. But this is yeah, this is a nice, really nice black and white. Nothing completely black. Nothing completely white. It's kind of it's kind of just touching both ends of the histogram without actually touching it you know it's kind of like right within uh on on either end and then you know good center square crop which makes makes it a really good good edit for instagram <laughs> this would probably get a million likes all right let me see if i can find that dng how did i miss that if i resynchronize this folder there's nothing. Digital negative. Oh, here it is. Let me just double check all of these. Yeah, I did all of these. Definitely did all the JPEGs. So, okay. Sorry, Randy. I'm glad you're still here. We can do this one real quick. Uh, let me pull in. So this is a panel. Looks like he did... Um, at least two shots. I can't, I can't tell. Let me look. At least two shot panel, right? And you used a uh, Olympus EM1X with the 7 to 14, 2.8. Negative 1.3. So you're really starting to save these highlights. Okay. Um, so let me just do that. And just to get it going. And I think we'll definitely sharpen this, pull these back. 
dial in a touch here just in case. Um, all right, see if that gets too wonky. Uh, where's my lens distortion? Let me pull it in. Okay, that's not bad. And we got, we really, the colors are very muted, so I, I'm going to go black and white. Or sepia. I'll pull the tones later. A uh, tiny bit of clarity. A little bit of texture. And then let's brighten it back up. That's still a bit too strong on the dehaze. Maybe you're right there. And I lost a little bit on the corner with the wonky hammer here. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to save it. Uh, Oh, there's a timer for what it's worth now. Uh, this looks good. Man, this is so sharp. This lens is amazing. My God. How come I can't get images this sharp? I'm thinking, I like the wide crop. I don't want to lose it because you went through a lot of trouble to get it like this. But I feel like since I lost this corner, I really don't need all of this either. Let me unlock this. Let me, let me just pick a standard crop, 16 by 7. And I like this side of the gas station. Ah, uh, that's a bit too tight. Okay, right there. That works for me. Maybe... Just right there. And... I don't know, color black and white. This is a 7 to 14 f 2.8. Really an amazing lens. You probably could have got it in one shot and not have to do a pano if I'm going to crop it like this. <laughs> but, uh, I'm a little bit, I'm a little torn between black and white and color. I'm going to stay with color. I like it. Um, I've never used these color wheels down here. These color grading wheels. Let's see what we got. We got that's mid tones. Mid tones are fine. Maybe just make them a little more orange, like so. I'll make the highlights. A little less purple. If I can. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, a little bit less purple. I don't know if that worked or not. Yeah, right there. And. Oh, that's shadows. What the hell? No wonder it wasn't going the direction I wanted. The highlights. Less purple. 
right there and then make the shadows more red. I don't know if I can Excuse me. <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me. Let me push the whites a little bit like that. Pull some blacks in. A bit more shadow. Oh, I'm out of time. Well. I'm just not happy with this edit, though. Maybe... Let me think for a second. I think... Let me pull this. That's good, that's good. I'm going to figure out, I'm just going to light paint for a little bit. Let me, um, let me just see where the lights are. Okay, I got it. Um, there's some here, a little bit in here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit here and here, and right along here, here. I'm just experimenting a little bit. And then some right here. Right there. Bit here. A little bit there. All right, now bring this back down. <clears throat> uh, not exactly what I was going for. Uh, let me fix the sky. So I need a heel brush here. Uh, I did a bad job right there, but that's okay. Right there. Let 
I need one more brush. A little bit in the shadows right here. No. Nope. All right. <clears throat> I could be here all night with this. I'm going to call it right there. Sorry, guys. Let's do a before and after. <laughs> uh, where's my... That's kind of the before and after. Randy had a much wider shot. But... Uh, Ugh. I need to fix the sky. I jacked up the sky a little bit too much, but I was all I was really trying to do is save the highlights up here. But I kind of jacked it up here, which is easy enough to fix later. Um, but it's okay. I would probably darken back here a little bit. Let's see what it looks like black and white now. Eh, it's okay. It's really a nice shot. I love shots like this. It reminds me a lot of uh, Nick Carver when he goes out and takes like these abandoned building things. And I, I tried to do a couple shots like this. They came out okay. But, um, all right, Randy, I know you probably hate me now, right? But it's an awesome picture. <laughs> and I really jacked up your photo. If you go to Randy's Flickr account, he does, his edits are like a thousand times better than what I do here. And I'm just, I'm always shocked. You know, I'm just surprised you still send me your pictures to edit because you're so much better than I am. Like I could spend like all night on this and it's still probably not going to be as good as the edit that you do on your own site or in your Flickr account. So, um, yeah. Okay. I try, I try Trevor. All right. So same message as always this Sunday, I have again, Maddie Salanto and Emily Lowry from micro four nerds. And then afterwards I'll do my normal uh, photo editing session and I'm going to practice up some, I'm feeling like you guys are like eclipsing me a little bit because <laughs> I do look at your Flickr pages uh, for the people that I know of, like I know DeMorkin and Randy, and there's probably a few others here that have Flickr accounts. Uh, if you if you have a Flickr account and I'm not following you, just go to mine and you know make send me a message or something so I can follow you. Because uh, it's always neat to see. What always surprises me is when I go to your Flickr accounts, I see the same picture you sent me on your site on your Flickr page, but your edit's better than mine. Now, granted, I'm usually doing a four minute edit, so. You know, you can cut me a little slack, but for the most part, yeah, you guys do a great job. Um, oh, Randy has it. Oh, yeah, let me go. Let me go there. Let's go there right now, Randy, since we're all here. Um, right. New stuff here. I don't know, Randy, where is it? And you'll see it at the bottom. I don't see it. I'm looking. Go back to the home page. Plant landscape, travel. Yeah, this one I saw. You just went to this one. This, these were really good shots in here. 
I love this one, the Castle Dome. Um, I don't know, Randy. Randy, go. Oh, go to Flickr. Okay. Um, go to Flickr. Randall. Randall Scott, I think, right? Yeah, this one. Oh, here it is. Yeah, see? Nice. See, now this looks like an old, old... I did see this, come to think of it. I just didn't recognize it because you sent me the raw image. But yeah, see what I mean? Randy does... And then I was looking at uh, Randy's other photo. I think it's further down. Like, he sent me this one to edit. Look how nice this is, you know? Really nice. I mean, you kept the, whole, you kept the full frame. But you did cut off the left side, I see. And you cut off a little bit here, so... Oh, it's a square edit. That's why it's cut off. It's a square crop. But um, definitely... Um... Definitely everybody should check out Randy's, Randy's, uh, follow Randy on Flickr or wherever. And then if I'm not following you, just send me a message on Flickr and I'll follow you. Okay. Uh, again, I guess that's the end of the stream. It's been a couple hours. I really appreciate you guys sending your pictures in. It's, I do my best to edit them. Hopefully you like a few of them. I mean, they are kind of speed edits, most of them, except that last one. So, uh, look at them as a way as a starting point if you like what you saw it's really a starting point it's not really an end right it's just a starting point for editing so uh keep sending them in it gives me lots of practice i need it trust me <laughs> and i really love you guys editing my photos I, i'm going to put them in my forum for everybody to see all at once because uh, you guys all do an awesome job on on a single image look how many different um edits we got today it's amazing how different every edit is so uh you guys have a good weekend uh, i'll be back on sunday hopefully we'll see you all in the live stream with uh, maddie and uh, emily so thanks again